I just realized my microphone was off. Hey, hey, hey. But hey, guys, what's up? It's Tevin here with Vice and Wix. This is a very bare bones mic uh, edition. I uh, don't have the green screen behind me. Unfortunately, uh, we've been kind of moving things around the office and uh, we're trying to see what fits best. So we're just kind of going up here and winging it. Uh, but I do want to go over two things, and that would be Monero. Monero and Bitcoin. All right. Uh, just because I posted ideas about these things, uh, uh, you know, probably a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it seems like they are, uh, well, at first, what I thought they were going to be doing is, was going to come true. It's kind of around that area, but a little bit lower than that area. Uh, but I think that the next areas that I called are actually about going to be spot on. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see play out. So... Um, again, the smart money channel. Uh, if you are the type of person that trades off trend lines, triangles, bear flags, bull flags, all that kind of retail mumbo jumbo uh, that confuses a lot of people because you usually lose at it most of the time, um, then this is your other option, basically, right? Uh, your other option is smart money, which basically doesn't go off any of that stuff and it goes off of price action and the price action for this is basically price will head toward um, an opening right in the price and then price will then also uh, go towards uh, imbalances so big gaps things like that uh, gaps that have been made you know for that you know let's say it's been consolidating for a while and then it makes a short low and then it makes a huge high and then it makes it a little short low. There's gonna be a big gap in that big high, right? So, um, and it can it may continue up for a little bit, but then eventually it'll come back down to that area to where it did make that gap. So, uh, that's kind of things that uh, we look for in smart money. And so, uh, that's what we basically want to talk about. All right. Um, so, if that's the kind of thing that you you do like. Um, I think this is the one I hit. Again, I just had to create a new scene. So I would say like, subscribe, and share, right? All right, let's head to the charts. Oh, of course. Even though the charts I already put up there, they're not up there right now. But we can get them up there. All right. Well, they should be up there. Jeez, what what is happening here? Okay, something's wrong. There it is. Okay, I just had to click on something else and then click back on the chart, and then it showed up. Jeez, this thing is ridiculous. Okay. So first we are on BTC and what I did in the very original call that I had was somewhere around, I think it was like 26 or 24, somewhere in there. Um, I don't know. To be honest, I, I wanted to not give you guys bad information. I want to give you guys good information. Uh, let's check out exactly where I called it. You know, I don't want to be lying to everybody and be like, oh man, I called this right at 1900. No, I, I, I'm not that type of person. Um, okay, so I was 24 to 1 to 1980. Or 19,800, right? I was saying Bitcoin would reverse here. And if you do this, this is actually what happened. Right, so it's in that reversal point right now. However, if we go back to Bitcoin, what I'm seeing is that monthly fair value gap that's just below it. So this was a full month of an imbalance that it wants to fill. Generally, what will happen? It may fill all of it. It may only get to halfway through. I don't know. Um, but uh, once it does get to one of those, right, um, then generally it'll pop back up. So I would actually maybe even 
draw this down a little bit further to give you a little w leeway. And what I always tell people in situations like this, if you're going to go for something like consequential encroachment, if you're going to, you know, definitely want to jump in this trade, use small amounts and small leverage at first, and then once it gets to a lower part, you know, makes makes its low, and then it, what it will do is it will drive up, and then come down, and then once it comes down, you will find that 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 second low basically and then that's whenever you hit the trigger uh on the as m you know try try to hit as much um you know, percentage of your um account as possible and as, as well as you know try to get a decent amount of leverage in there as well and that way you can grow that account pretty well and again that's just talking from experience this is not financial advice whatsoever uh, I am not a financial advisor, even though I'd like to be one. Uh, I'm trying to get my FINRA license, so if uh, any of you guys want to... I, w I was trying to do this live so I could get some super chats in. Um, but uh, I do have ways for you to donate for me. It's down below in the description if uh, you want to try to help me get licensed. If you think I'm doing a good enough job, that is. Um, but as you can see, what I think Bitcoin is going to do... Right, and here's what I said earlier. I said enter lightly, maybe at 0.2 percent. Uh, and generally, what you would enter at, if you're m more of like a definite person, would be at 2 percent. And why I said 0.2 here? Why? Because it, once you get all the way down here, from what 24, 2100 or something like that to 15,000. Oh man, that's a huge like what 40, 50 percent, something like that, like just on leverage. So you got to be careful on those. But it, it, if you put on a small amount, you know, it could still, you know, take it down pretty good. But, um, but what I drew today, earlier, and placed um, within that same trading, right? So uh, I made a mistake here and was like, oh man, dude, this thing's gonna jump up. It's gonna do something. I said the next stop's 40k. And then, of course, it came back down, and I was like, okay, I see what's going on here. So, I kind of gave you the whole four-hour thing, and I said, you know, if it hits that one-hour block, that would make sense for it to run up, but then that would also make sense for it to run up, and then also back down, because people wouldn't expect it. And that's what smart money's about. It's about you not expecting it. It's about you reading this chart and going, okay, it went below discount price, hit a one hour, you know, hit the bullish order block or, you know, consolidation or something like that or whatever kind of retail language they use. I don't even know. I don't know how to do retail anymore. Um, but to us, it's, you know, it went inside a four hour fair value gap and then boom, it just ran straight up above and it, it broke that liquidity right there. Those equal highs. So it broke that liquidity right there. So anybody that was short right in that area, they got taken out quick because they probably had a short stop loss thinking that that was the next um, uh, the resistance line. There we go. God, I'm having a hard, hard time with words tonight. Um, and then it falls, comes back down into the, to, to the one up fair value gap. Now you're seeing it run up. And if we go back to the chart, you're seeing it start to find. Yep, look, I, I, I put my run up to here. And then I see that run coming down, and I have a feeling that that's what I'm get, that's a, what it's gonna do. Um, there is a possibility that it could just stay, that it could just try to drop below again in this below the 60% line, uh, and also within that one hour fair value gap. If it does that, awesome, that'd be great. Um, but I don't see that happening because of this one hour fair value gap or the, sorry, the, the, the monthly, <laughs> that's a huge difference between a one hour and a monthly monthly fair value gap is when you go to the month time frame, right? And then you will see this right here is probably, well, I don't have a head in this thing, so never mind. Um, but you will see here between this wick and this wick that is your fair value gap that is a gap that is created on the monthly 
right now once you get in a smaller time frame you will see that there are also different uh you know four hours you know time or fair value gaps and one hour fair value gaps and things like that but s larger time frames trump smaller time frames always remember that always remember that larger time frames trump smaller time time frames so that's why I, I always look at these taller time frames and uh you know it couldn't I don't think it will, but I mean, what I think it's probably going to do is actually get down to the bottom of this thing. Um, because if you, I mean, man, see that this spiked so high that a lot of people probably thought it was going to stop here and it kind of consolidated and dropped again, right? Uh, and now I think it's going to do the same thing. Then it made that run up, and then I feel like it's going to drop again. Um, and then probably fill this four hour fair value gap for hello monthly fair value gap. And then once it fills the monthly, then it should probably be a very bullish season after that. Cause if you can see, it just made a huge run up and then we had the fall and now we're about to reverse. We're, I mean, we're, we're, we're pretty much at that reversal point. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So this was the 2022 high, or, or sorry, the 2017 high. Um, and everybody thought that was going to be like the, you know, the uh, resistance line uh, or the uh, support line. I'm like, come on. Yeah, th 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 this is what retail thinks. They think well, whatever the last previous high was before it was broken is going to turn into the support. You've got to be... And I'm not, I don't know, I don't say this to mean disparaging, but not very bright if you're, if that's the way you're going to think. Because smart money is going to see that and they're going to be like, oh, remember those people that are told over and over and over again that once, you know, a previous high is, you know, is, kind of, is met, come down to um, after it makes a new high. Uh, and it's, they think it's going to stop there and they're going to keep going up. So how about we sell a bunch of it and then we cover our sales by shorting it and then we make a bunch of money that way because everybody else is going to buy it and so that smart money is the large institutions that have the power the money the wherewithal to do that basically so uh that is what i believe will be happening to bitcoin take a look at this and see where else so yeah i have the opening there around 16200 and then i also have um the stop loss just below that well not just below but but about uh 13 to 40 somewhere around there i think would be safe um and then to get just you know uh, first target done. I think a first, a good first target would be uh, somewhere around twenty two eight, and then you might see it fall back a little bit after that, and then run back up. Probably about to the one sixty two, so then it'd probably be about twenty eight, and then maybe one more, and we'll we'll, we'll see what kind of liquidity we're looking at at that point. Uh, but definitely the the current liquidity area that it's created has been right around here this this 22 number around around 21 eight somewhere around that so I think it's probably where it's gonna head but it's probably gonna fall at least down to almost 15 before it comes back up to about 22 um and if you have any questions about that, put it in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, again, this is all about smart money. This has nothing to do with retail trading. What retail trading is all about create, you know, making trend lines and connecting them. And anybody can make a trend line. I mean, all you're doing is connecting two different, tr two different prices. That's all you're doing. Um, so. And I have a feeling this one's going to, and you see me drop this one low, run this one up, and then drop it low again. Because I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Uh, they're going to drop it below this sell side liquidity. And when they do, they're going to do it hard. 
because that sell side liquidity is going to act as a basically a retail uh, support area. And so retail is going to see that as support. And then once it drops into that area, it'll probably be a little bit slow moving, but then all of a sudden it's going to drop hard. So get prepared for that is, is, is what I'm, I believe is going to happen. And then as soon as it gets down and it won't hit qua consequent encroachment just yet, it may, it may, but it, you know, it'll get close to, and then it'll pull back out really quick. To get people thinking, okay, it, it you know it made its low now, now it's going to run back out, and then it's going to psych people out again and drop and make another low. That uh, that is a classic, classic, uh, smart money move, and that creates what we call a breaker, right? So you would have a low high lower low scenario at that point, and when you have a low high lower low scenario, uh, then basically you have a breaker all the way across, and then what would happen? Is I will draw another path here really quick. Okay, so that low, high, lower, low scenario. So this would be one of the lows, right? Well, it didn't even, didn't even stick. Oh no! All right, this would be one of the highs, or the high, I should say. And then this would be the lower low. So generally what happens after this is that I will come up, bump this, come back down a little bit, and then almost make like a straight shot up through it. Maybe like do like a quick jab there and then come back down and then use this as support. And then once that is used as support, you should see it come up and probably break these here. So come up here and pull back down a little bit, hit that area right there where all those three are lined up. And then come up and break that manufactured liquidity that is above, right? And then once it does that, boom, boom. And then you have all these drops over here, right? So four hours, they kind of connect. So there's really not much of a, of a fair value gap there. But if you were to go to the daily, that's a completely different story. Now you have an area that's from right here to right here. That's a daily. So that's the area that it would be looking for. It would be that area right there. So that's what I think right now we're looking at as to what Bitcoin is going to do. Now let's go ahead and head on over to XMR. No, I don't need to connect. I don't know what this is. Okay, so right now, uh, if you watched my Thursday's video, this is what I was predicting as the white line. And I was thinking, okay, uh, it came up or, you know, basically had a couple different points of interest um it hit a bearish order block dropped down right and then what did it do it broke the structure bre breaking the structure meaning this low right here that's uh listed at around 11046 right so it broke that closed below it and then it hit this what i call false support right because you have one one low around that area. Now you have two, three, almost four lows around that area. A lot of people are going to be thinking that is a support line. Well, that's what smart money is all about. They do that on purpose to get you to think that it's support. Whenever, if you actually look over here, you actually have a four hour fair value gap within that false support. And now what does price do? Price goes toward liquidity. And it also looks to fill gaps. This does both. That's why I think this is really going to head low. Not not extremely low, but low enough to where people are not going to expect it. Uh, they may think it could come down to the break of structure. You know, um, I'm thinking retail is probably going to think it's probably going to hit this false support. And then probably go back up the other way. So you're going to see a lot of 
liquidity being dumped in this area right here, right around 107. And then a lot of it being taken out probably by the time it hits, you know, uh, because these people are probably going to be so confident in themselves that they're going to throw up three lots, right? They're going to throw up three lots. And after they throw up three lots, uh, they're going to, um, you know, leverage it at nine times. And they're going to, you know, only allow for like a $2 stop loss or some crap like that. So, um, instead, what I'm banking on is it actually dropping down into the whole four hour fair value gap, right? And then once it drops down into the whole four hour fair value gap, it will drop down. I don't know if it's going to drop down this low. Cause I, I have that there just because that's the 88.6. But if we're looking, it, it could because that is the last fair value gap. Or sorry, the, the last bullish order block. Um, even though this one did come down and touch it, it did come about halfway through. Um, it could get that low just because it could try to... Uh, connect or correct this gap that it made, right? So I don't know if you can see it, but there is a bit of a gap in between here and here, and between the red lines. Even though the green line, it, the you know the 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 bullish line is full, it still could be full of errors or whatnot. So <laughs> that's why I think it could possibly spike down that far. Um, but it may not. It may only get to about halfway through um, the the bullish order block of this red candle here. So that would be your last down candle before your up candles you know, close above them. So if we were to draw this as your last... change the colors on that really quick do a little quick border red okay and then do text um, bullish I should have should have done red I should have done green because green means it's gonna go up so if we do a bullish order block right there and actually let me, I am gonna change it to green I'm going to be that guy that's going to change it to green. And then pull fib. And pull fib from the body, right, of the of that that candle. Right? And it's the 4-hour candle. So, if you do that, then what you would be expecting is, well, the, don't even worry about this white path because it's not going to happen because uh, it went up instead of down like I thought it would. So it went the opposite way. But, however, I think what's going to happen is that it's going to drop drop from here. And the reason I think it's going to drop from here on both charts is due to what we call the, uh, the weekly formations or uh, the weekly... Um, can't think of the word right now. Uh, kind of like the weekly forecast. Or, uh, there's the word. Weekly profile. That's the word I was looking for. So profile is a, basically a specific way of how the price a action works within a week. And on this one, on XMR... I actually posted I an idea about it. Maybe do I have it up yet? I thought I had it up. Maybe I don't. So we are gonna go to it. Um, to my my profile, and we are gonna check out what I said about the XMR. Hello. Um, and that this was posted today. And I said short it short short the week. Meaning short it now for the rest of the week until it hits the 105, basically. That's what I said. So how I came across this, or how, or how I thought about this, first of all, I was drawing each week in here. I may have some of these screwed up, but I may not. I don't know. 
when I first did it, I think I screwed it up, but when I second did it, like down here, these are fine. So <laughs> don't worry about the weeklies up here. Uh, they may be a little bit messed up. Um, I think I was looking at some of July's numbers and some of June numbers wrong and getting them crisscrossed, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, it runs up, it creates this high, but it doesn't break the structure, right? So since there's no break of structure, there's no upward momentum. However, on the opposite side, we had a break of structure on the downside, just like we did with Bitcoin, right? Did we have that on Bitcoin? I could have I swore we did. Uh, let me double check and just be sure. I want to check it on the one hour. Yeah, we did. Kind of similar, but kind of not. It's not pulling down. There we go. Okay. So you have to break a structure here all the way across, hitting those three lines. Then eventually moving up, going, you know, then it consolidated here for a little bit. And I think the reason it consolidated there would have to do with this fair value gap. Uh, that was on the four hour. Um, so it made sure it wanted to completely close that gap. By, and it just did it by consolidating right through it. And then once it got to a point to where it was going to try to make a decision of where it wanted to go, boom, ran up. And Oh, I think it did break structure. Sorry, I did not notice that before. Okay, so it did break structure. But it didn't close. That is the main thing. It needs to close above these highs. But it did close above the previous close. But I don't think that's what's going to make the difference. It, re it really needs to... Yeah, and this is the four hour too. It needs to close above these, these previous highs. Because you can see, as soon as it, you know, you get one, two candles above it, it reaches up into this right here, which I believe is a one hour fair value gap. So it reaches up into this one hour fair value gap, and then boom, starts dropping again. So I think that's what's going to happen. We're going to see a large drop. You have a large fair value gap right here. Boom. I mean, and just from the points that I drew, were all points pretty much based off that fair value gap. So it can hit the bottom of the fair value gap, run back up, and then while it's running back up, uh, it could hit a bearish order block and then drop again, and then come in and fill this four hour gap, and then try to drop down all the way down to 205, I think, is where I have my limit set. Uh, somewhere around here now it could try to i when when i say it you know it could try to jot down to these areas you know sometimes these charts have a tendency to you know pull back to the um uh, the discount level right so the discount level in this area uh would be so you got a 100 here I'm going to get rid of all these because that just has to do with a breaker. Okay, here we go. So, it's just below the breaker structure. So, this right here, that is smart money buys. And you can tell, too. Because they, they boom, they shot it out of there. But, they also knew where it was going to turn around, probably. Because they know the algorithm of this. So whenever I saw this jump up today, I thought, okay, it's Monday. We still have you know, five days of the week left. Um, there are basically six. Uh, so this is early in the week for, for it to jump up. Generally, Tuesdays is when it does it, but sometimes crypto can be Tuesdays or Wednesdays. It'll make the high. Sometimes it's or sorry, Mondays and Tuesdays. Sometimes it's Wednesdays that that that'll, that'll make the high. It's really weird. It'll, it'll be slow getting up to it, and then once it gets up to that high, then boom, it'll like drop. And then by the time Friday hits, it's at the low. And then Saturday, Sunday will be a consolidation. And it, it's just like those kind of things in, in the patterns that you just kind of have to watch for, because no two patterns are ever exactly the same. 
but what do, what is what does repeat is liquidity and and imbalances those repeat all the time and that's what you have to look for and put yourself in those shoes and try to figure out how you're going to take care of that okay so there we go we have a no break structure coming up and then it should break this liquidity here or the, there's this rejection block and that should be it and after that well what i'm thinking um once it gets above this liquidity line you do see a bearish order block right here that last green candle that's up before it goes down so i'm thinking that could probably be the last so around 138 is what you would be aiming for once you got down to about 105 which that's a very very large move um yeah, but you just got to be watching it the whole time make sure it's going to be going up because uh, what could be possible as well is that it could just drop. I don't know how far it'd go, it'd, it'd go down to. My guess it would, it would be 88. Why 88? Um, those are just the smart money numbers that you know they end with. Anything with uh, 2580. Always, always a smart money number for some reason, especially 80%, you know. So that's another reason why I kind of have these things drawing down to 88.6%. But I kind of think they're probably going to stay around that 79, 80% uh, area. Just because that would be the entrance of that uh, bullish order block that we have right here. So, and I think it would, pr to me, I think, especially coming up from this area, dropping all the way down, as soon as it touched that bullish order block, boom, it's got, like, going to ricochet right back out. But uh, I think that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for, uh, hopefully it was interesting. Hopefully it'll help somebody uh, if they, you know, if you do like these kind of things and you do want to continue watching uh, again. You're going to do this. You're going to like, subscribe, and share. Um, and, and share with people that are trying to learn. You know, that that are, are confused about the whole retail theory. They don't get trend lines. They, they, it doesn't work for them, things like that. This is the thing they need to know because this is what really works. I, I did the whole retail thing for a year and lost over, I want to say, 1500 bucks in no time. I've been trading for three years now. And it was my second year I started learning re to, to do smart money trading, um, which is all taught on Forex and also taught on um, uh, indices, um, indices, what was it called? Um, no, just the major indices, NASDAQ, in, indices, futures, there we go. Uh, NASDAQ, all that good stuff. Uh, and then uh, once we learned all that, then uh, next thing you know, I, I wanted to bring it over to crypto. And I brought it over to crypto, and it works like a charm because they all do the same thing. They all want to make you f freak out at different prices and do different things at certain prices. But if you can understand how the people with all the money think, then you trade like them. And then you get all the money too. So I actually went from a negative trader to a positive trader, um, and uh, and, I, and I still have a full time job. I'm a, geez, I'm a supervisor level at a manufacturing job, so I work 12 hours a day. But this is my passion. This is my hobby. I want this to be my full time job in the future. Um, so this is where I always come to as my sanctuary. So thank you for being part of my sanctuary from Bodies and Wicks, and for everybody out there. Always wear your pants.